the Office of Naval Research, innovations for the future force. Navy Autonomous Swarm Boats. Mission, Safe Harbor. U.S. Navy patrol boats play an important role in defending our sailors, ships, and harbors. These high-speed vessels conduct harbor and perimeter defense patrols, provide armed escorts for Navy and other high-value vessels, and serve to detect, deter, or detain unauthorized or threatening vessels. The Office of Naval Research, or ONR, is sponsoring work to develop autonomous unmanned vessels to conduct these often routine but sometimes dangerous missions. The sky's the limit on what autonomous vessels can do for our force. Right now, they're doing very basic tasks like harbor defense, high value unit protection, but you can envision them doing escort missions. You can envision autonomous vessels delivering supplies ashore. You can envision them doing mine clearance, mine delivery. It's limitless. Autonomy gives the Navy many advantages. A great capability to relieve the sailor of the dirty, the dangerous, the dull uh, missions out there, okay? In this example, where we're protecting a harbor, instead of having four patrol boats out there with three or four sailors on each boat, you have one or two sailors sitting in an operations center that are controlling four or five boats. Advances in autonomy programming and small expendable sensors have enabled the development of swarm capabilities. In this case, ONR is developing the capability of autonomous swarms of inexpensive, expendable unmanned boats to overwhelm and confuse the enemy. The autonomous swarm is the capability of having many uh, robot boats out on the water and be able to work cooperatively together. This is really a force multiplier. Um, if I was on a ship or, or an aircraft and I had the ability to send a number of unmanned vehicles out there to see things for me, to act on them if it had to, you know, that makes my job easier. It also makes me safer, especially in a force protection role, in a defensive role, it's that strength in numbers. Autonomous swarm boats were first demonstrated in 2014 when they protected a high value ship from simulated attackers. The CNO had asked that um, we demonstrate the ability of unmanned surface vehicles to do some type of offensive mission. That mission was a high value unit escort. As the technology has grown, so too have the mission opportunities for autonomous swarm. Swarm two, different warfare mission. This warfare mission is all about harbor defense and harbor approach defense. We have four unmanned surface vehicles. They're all working cooperatively. They have a harbor to protect. Their mission is, is to look at a specific point and get radar, a sensor, see what's out there, patrol it, find out if there's anything that's in the way, anything that's gonna come try and come into our restricted area, and then intercept that, tell us what it is, and then take appropriate action. So the technology behind this is called Caracas. It's been developed by ONR over the last 13 years or so for autonomous control of unmanned surface vehicles. Now, with evolving technical expertise and sustained research, it allows multiple unmanned surface vehicles to communicate with each other on harbor defense missions, including each unmanned boat using the Caracas capability to choose its own path and share information with the others in the swarm. In this exercise, there were four unmanned surface vehicles given a mission to patrol a harbor area. When an intruder comes into the area, the nearest boat moves toward that potential threat. The swarm boats will intercept and follow the intruder, transmitting data to classify the contact as a threat or not. When you look at this technology in a defensive role, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is force protection. Certainly in an offensive role, I could see increasing the ship's both its surveillance and its weapons range by putting these vessels out there over the horizon. In October of 2000, terrorists on a small boat approached the USS Cole while it was in a harbor in Yemen and detonated a bomb killing 17 sailors and injuring 39. If you had a couple of these boats that were randomly patrolling around the coal while she's sitting at anchor being refueled, 
and you had an intruder come in, somebody in combat could be monitoring the boats, they could be seeing the intruder come in. So ONR has developed two key technologies. One is a technology that allows the four USVs to share their situational awareness, which is gleaned from radar contact data on each of those boats. And then the second key technology allows for cooperative decision making across those four boats. That cooperative decision making is a high technical degree of difficulty, very challenging technical problem, and it's something that the team has worked together successfully to implement in this Swarm 2 demonstration. I think it's going really great with pretty much all of our runs. We've been able to patrol, classify them correctly, and escort them out of the box as needed. The Swarm Experiment is made possible by the collaborative partnerships between industry, Navy research activities, active duty Navy, and contractors. Doing this experiment is a first step in getting out to the Navy in an operational environment, but once you get into the hands of our bright young sailors, they're going to find new ways to make this technology useful. The speed at which we've gone from concept to experiment and now working vehicles on the water patrolling without anybody on board in an autonomous manner, software working stably has been truly impressive and that's due to the fact that we have this collaborative team to really move this in the right direction. Autonomous systems exist, you can buy them, you're already seeing autonomous vehicles driving the roads, now, very soon you're going to be seeing autonomous ships shipping goods across the oceans. Through this demonstration we're trying to show the Navy that we have developed the capability, it's viable, it's ready, it's cost efficient and it's ready for prime time. For further information, contact the Office of Naval Research.